A spring day dawns on Mount Athos. Sunrise seems to intensify the holiness of a place sanctified by daily devotion and prayer. Practices that have not ceased for more than a thousand years. This monastic republic of 20 monasteries, which functions and flourishes here, is known as the Ark of Orthodoxy, the Garden of the Virgin, and the Holy Mountain, titles that reflect the harmony which exists between the natural and the supernatural. The eastern finger of the Halkidiki promontory projecting into the Aegean Sea does indeed resemble an ark, a great vessel under sail, yet motionless. At the same time, it suggests a garden, a marvelous garden, created out of man's harmonious relationship with his environment, a relationship free of all rivalry. While the peak of the Holy Mountain rises to the imposing height of 2,033 meters and affords a panoramic view of the surrounding sea and interval. The natural geographical isolation of the Athenite Peninsula, its crisply sculptured form, its varied altitudes and the climate changes wrought by them have created a unique mosaic of ecosystems. There are five zones of vegetation on the Holy Mountain. The coastal zone is a very narrow belt immediately above the shoreline, which is for the most part rocky, steep to abrupt, and with only a handful of sandy inlets. Anchorites have always favored these sheer southern coastal areas for their hermitages. Here, rock and ground covering plants and shrubs abound. The few sandy beaches support the yellow poppy, cottonweed, seaside spurge, and bellflowers. Next comes the zone of evergreen broad-leafed trees. The zone encircles the whole region like a hoop from the coastal belt to a height of 300 to 500 meters. Forests of Aleppo pines, their delicate green hues acting as a balm to both the sight and the spirit, cover the northern part of the peninsula. Here, landscapes of singular beauty and rare sensuous delight unfold before the pilgrim's eye. Because of its wetter and colder climate, the eastern side of the Holy Mountain is where one sees the most productive and abundant concentration of many varieties of broad-leaved evergreens. Oaks, laurels, ashes, arbutus, tree heathers, and myrtles, a tumult of form and color expressed in foliage, flower, and bark. and everywhere are climbing plants, honeysuckles, 
and wild vines. On the west side of the mountain, the climate is drier and warmer. Semi-arid kinds of vegetation coexist with the prevailing arbutus, holly oak, and maple. Here, the home oak, laurel, and Judas tree are rarer. The southern part of Athos is predominantly limestone and is the driest and hottest area of the Holy Mountain. The tree euphorbia occurs here too, where the wild olive, Kermes oak and arbutus are preeminent. The most favored sites are occupied by holly oak, laurel, ash, and the Judas tree. of the Holy Mountain has not remained unaffected by human activities. Most of the monasteries, monastic dependencies, cottages, cells, and boat and warehouses have been erected in the broad-leaved evergreen zone. They have been built in such settings and in such a manner that they are in almost total harmony with their natural surroundings. planners and ecologists have much to learn from Athos about the appropriate choices of building sites and materials and about respect for the landscape. The land cultivated by monks lies close to the monasteries and is of small extent. Olive groves, vineyards, orchards, and vegetable plots. These are sufficient to supply or supplement the needs of the communities within the limits of their customary fare. Moderate use of the land, a matter of great debate in recent times in the world at large, is here a centuries-old tradition. Every feature harmoniously blends in both with the environment and with the building. The higher one ascends towards the peak of Mount Athos, the greater the change in the environment. Evergreen trees gradually intermingle and coexist with the deciduous, broad-leaved ones of the third zone, until, above a height of 300 to 400 meters, the chestnut is everywhere predominant. Chestnut trees are widespread throughout the central section of the peninsula. 
often in conjunction with oaks and firs. The pilgrim reaches this point along footpaths trodden out in the shade of trees of great antiquity. Elegant fountains constructed of hand-worked stone refresh the wayfarer. Chestnut is the monk's most beloved tree. His relationship with the forest and its products began when monks first settled on the mountain. It was here that they obtained timber for the construction and maintenance of their buildings, for trellises and supports in their vineyards and vegetable gardens, and for firewood to serve their domestic needs. special care and attention. Mediterranean mountain conifers, which at first are found scattered among the deciduous growths, eventually dominate the landscape at 1,100 meters and above, creating their own distinct zone of vegetation. The black pine grows up to the 1,300 meter contour, while the firs that grow on Mount Athos prosper up to 1,600 meters, where they define the upper limits of the coniferous zone. It is here that the forests of the Holy Mountain peter out. The terrain now becomes remarkably stony and bare. The sky seems lower. We now find ourselves in a subalpine zone. Narrow-leaved milkvetch, berberis, and the so-called everlasting flower are characteristic growths, together with shrubs with twisted stems, such as dwarf juniper, laurel, and the Mount Olympus rose. The peak of Athos is surmounted by an iron cross and symbols of the Passion and the Resurrection. The cross seems to be blessing from on high this monastic republic, of which the world knows none other. The view from here is breathtaking, especially as the sun sets in the west and the holy mountain throws its imposing shadow over the sea waters.
follow a constant rhythm, but as the seasons of the year follow one upon the other, each imparts a distinct color to the landscapes of the holy mountain. The summer is hot and dry and advances from the zone of evergreens to that of the broadleaf trees, never touching the subalpine zone. It is the season in which fruit is ripening on many species of trees. The hues of autumn invest the peninsula with a different quality. The green of the broadleaf trees turns to yellow, which gradually takes on all the hues from red to deep crimson, finally becoming a dark brown. branches of their leaves. These fall to the ground where processes of decay convert them to the humus that nourishes and invigorates the trees. Autumn marks the end of the tree felling season. of the year, it covers the peak of Athos. Snow also lies in the lower zones, enfolding both deciduous and evergreen trees in the unspotted whiteness of its embrace. are the first to recognize the onset of spring. Soon, spring will make itself felt throughout this land immersing the Athenite state in a riot of color, a spate of water, a confusion of scents, and a concert of birdsong. Remind us that the source of life is inexhaustible and that death is overcome.
Down by the shore, in the small port of Daphne, the flow of pilgrims starts all over again. There is much for them to see on the holy mountain, and much for them to experience. Spiritual uplift, the absence of rivalry, the balance struck between man and nature. And above all, that the divine injunction that men should have dominion over all the earth means that we assume responsibility for the world entrusted to us. <laughs>